Hi, Tom Martina, Martina Motorsports. We're here right now, which used to be Ohio Drag City. It used to be also called Meander Raceway. Meander Reservoir is that way. It's the water supply for the Youngstown City. But this was where we grew up at. 1970, 1968, 1970, you'd pull your race car, truck, and trailer in here, which by the way, back in the days, nobody had trailers. They either drove their car to a racetrack or they pulled it in with a tow bar. And over there in that field were the pits. In the pits, there'd be piles, what they call pit piles. And in a pit pile, there'd be a floor jack, the tires on your car that you drove in with, and a four-way spinner wrench. You just to jack your car up, take the tires off, put the slicks on, drop the exhaust, either throw the exhaust on the pit pile, or you took the exhaust pipes and you just bolted them over to the next hole on your headers if you wanted to run open headers. Now, when you came to the gate, there was a fellow that owned the track, Alex, Alex Theophilus. Alex ran the track, his brother George ran the concession stand over there, which is now gone. Everybody came to the gate, Alex had a little carpenter's bib in, full of money and change, He'd give you a Ohio Drag City newsletter. He'd throw it on the dashboard, take your money, make your change, go in his pocket, grab a handful of Tootsie Rolls, throw them on the dashboard. Now the, the secret with the Tootsie Rolls is, is if you forgot about them, they melted on your desk. So in August, you had to eat them or throw them in the back seat on the floor. But if you forgot about them, they'd melt on the dash or, he'd, or Alex get a, a fast throw and they go down to the defroster vent. And then you lost the Tootsie Rolls and the car smelled like hot chocolate all winter long. So let's take a walk through the old Ohio Drag City. Another thing about Drag City, back when we raced in the 70s, going into the 80s, everybody had a car name on their car. Our car was naturally Tino's toy. But there was the Silver Fox, Pucker Power, Hind Motors out of Kinsman, Ohio had had Hemi cars. The Hustlin' Hemi, the Honkin' Hemi, the Hollin' Hemi. Melnick out of, Melnick out of uh, Hubbard, Ohio, down the street. Jeff, Devil's Duster. Ricky Forge, Boardman, Ohio. Name of the car, Midnight Rider. We had a, car, a Corvette that ran out here. He had Pac-Man last car. He was the Pac-Man Pac -Man Corvette. Everybody, the, the dragsters weren't that big in the day because everybody had door cars, but every car had a name. I can't remember anybody that didn't come down here that didn't have a name on their race car. Another thing was, you got guys from Akron, Ohio come up here. Canton, Ohio. Guys come down from Cleveland. Guys come over from Pittsburgh to run his big, he'd have a thousand dollar race every month. And it was a big race. So guys would travel, guys you never saw before in this area would all come down here. This track was fenced in, there was a fence. Killer Brooks, Lorenzo Brooks. East side of Youngstown. It's a live Vega, which was a Pontiac Astra. He come off the track, another urban legend, off the track, ripping a four-speed transmission, never missed a gear. Jumping Drove Groves, turned out to be an IHRA champion, raced here every weekend. Jumping Joe was the name of the Camaro. Since this was a working airport, Alex used to come to work on Friday afternoon about 1 or 2 o'clock and he would plow all this. He had a, a tractor with a, a cutter on the back. He cut all the grass on Friday and like I said, since this was a working airport, you couldn't put any telephone poles up. You couldn't put any power lines up. So he had a, a wagon, which was a 4x4x4 four by four by four piece of plywood on 2x4s and wheels and he used to sit right here. So then Friday afternoon, he would come over here and was on a set of wheels. He would wheel it out to the track. And that was his starting line box. So now the power to run the starting line would come off a telephone pole that he had sitting over here. And it was all stretched out with all kind of wires and stuff. The track was set up with a Crondex timing which meant we had a battery pack and a light bulb from Crondex and it laid across the track and had them on cement bricks. So another urban legend was a lot of guys that come up here and kick the bricks and move the starting beams and throw off the timing system. But right here in the middle was this big box that he had 
sitting right here. It's at a high drag city on a panel with a stencil. And he would stand over here and run the Christmas tree over here. The dialings were put on a little board that was sitting right here on two cement bricks. And then he had a little sign that said Ohio Drag City. Now, we're gonna walk up here to the, start, the old starting line. All right, here's, here's the starting line for Ohio Drag City. You can see the asphalt's here, and Alex put in a concrete starting. This was back in 19, early 80s, we put a concrete starting line in. One, one lane wide, and that's all you got. And you can tell up there, because we did our burnouts downhill. Now I'm guessing the starting line was right in this area right here. We had a little bit of concrete, not 60 foot. Maybe we did have 60 foot back then, but there was no timers. You just had a, a starting timer and a finish timer. The guy in the tower would take your starting line, whatever your ET was, if you ran a 1050, he had on a piece of paper calibration that if you ran a 1050, you ran 121 mile an hour. And he used to announce it, yeah, 121 mile an hour, but no time, no speed traps, no 60 foot times, no half track, no eight mile marks, but the guy in the tower would guesstimate your ET. Some of these cement pads are in good shape. And I'm thinking right now, this is the starting line right here. This, this cement going into this cement is a report. So let's go with that. Yep, this was the starting line. This is the starting line right here. We're gonna go with that theory. This area here, from here to there, was the burnout area. So what happens is it's running downhill. If you pour too much water, then the water kept running downhill and keep going downhill, so they'd have to brim it all off. But that was one of the that was one of the characteristics of Ohio Drag City. Water running down the hill all night. So the more cars that raced, the more water ran down the hill. The cars used to go cars used to sit over there in the staging lanes by class. Come around and then start up here and then come down here to, on the approach. We used to line them up side by side. So two inside cars would be the next pair up, the two outside cars would be the next pair up. So you come down here and just pair up on this hill and go side by side for eliminations. Now, if you look down the track right now, it's level. It's still, it's still not bad, it's abandoned. The RC Club of Youngstown comes out here and flies their model airplanes, but it's pretty level. And if you look way at the end, there was a drop off. And if you lost your brakes or made a mistake, it was always dark out there, but the drop off was one of the, the problems with the track. They piled all this, all this dirt and stuff here so you can't, get, can't drive on the track, you can't get to the track. I'm sure a couple guys would like to come out and make one last blast on the, the famous Ohio Drag City 1320, which probably was never 1,320 foot long. But Alex and George Theophilus were way, about, uh, way ahead of their time with stuff that they did. If a guy broke down or a guy had problems first round, Alex would always put his arm around and say, here, here's a brake pass which nobody knows what a brake pass is, but Alex used to give you a brake pass. You went back to George, he gave you a ticket to let you in next week for free, and they give you a, a container full of french fries to make you feel better. So Alex was a good businessman. He loved all his racers, and I don't think anybody had a bad word to say about Alex and George Theophilus. Alex and George, this was their living. They had a shop in Sharon, PA at, at, the, at the Sunset Drag Strip. They built all their trophies in house. He'd, he'd buy cases of, of trophy pieces, put them together, 
trophy eliminations, everybody that won first round got a trophy. Something that, that is unheard of today in drag racing, which was a staple of Ohio Drag City, was the champagne drags. The last race of the year, all first round winners got a bottle of champagne, but you couldn't pick it up till the end of the night because he did it one year and everybody was all acting foolish. So they, they were enjoying their champagne. But at the end of the night, everybody stopped by and got their payday. They got their round money, their winning money. They got their trophies. Everybody that won first round got a bottle of champagne. It was only a $5 bottle of champagne, cold duck or whatever they had back in the day. But the champagne drags at Ohio Drag City never duplicated anywhere on the planet. But it was so cool. And then the other thing about the place was Alex leave to go back to Pennsylvania. He locked the gate. He says, you guys can stay all night long, just go out through the airport gate. We had grills going all night long, guys cooking hot dogs and hamburgers. The last race of the year, it was an all night, it was a Woodstock out here. Guys are hanging out, and it was a good time. We, we had nothing but fun out here. And now some of us have passed on, some of us have, have quit racing, some of the guys are still living the dream. There's a handful of guys that raced out here that are still on the circuit, still doing well. and. The thing about Meander or High Drag City was it was considered an outlaw track. If you if you had a homemade car, it wouldn't pass tech at Quaker City, which was an NHRA track. If it didn't pass tech, you ran Meander. They were they had a point system. They had a banquet at the end of the at the end of the season in January, February. We have a, they'd rent the Holiday Inn Hotel out over in Pennsylvania on the high PA line. 100, 125 people sit down banquet. I mean, everything that Norwalk's doing now, back in the day, Alex and George were doing for us. Hotels, banquets, trophies, jackets. And a funny part about this was, it was called the PDRA, the Professional Drag Racers Association. Back in the 70s, you had a patch, and if you didn't belong to the PDRA, you didn't get your money. So if you came from a different track or out of state from Pennsylvania, from Keystone Raceway Park, and you raced here and won, it was a known fact in the rules, you only got half the money. So if you didn't if you didn't join the PDRA with Alex and George, you only got a half a paycheck. So if you wanted your full paycheck before you raced that night, you started, you had to join the PDRA, which was a different logo, a different sanction, nothing to do with the PDRA that we love and adore today. But back then, that's what it was called, and it was to compete with the NHRA track down the street. Now, if you if you wanted to race a wheelbarrow here, bring your wheelbarrow out, put a motor on it, Alex will let you race. Every pro stalker on the East Coast has been here. The Arfons brothers from Akron brought the Green Mamba, Jet Dragster, and went down this track. Moats has been down this track. Top fuel and funny cars, I can't say I've ever seen an actual top fuel nitro breathing funny car, but I've seen a couple of alcohol dragsters come here. Butch Osmond, IHRA world champion, right down the street, Warren, Ohio, used to bring his drags right here and test it on Fridays and Saturday nights, set clutches, to burn tires, break in tires for his NHRA competition the following weeks. So we had a lot of alcohol cars that came here. And I'm thinking, what else? Wheel standers, jet cars, they've all been down this track. And in its day, this was the place to go. Every high school kid in town come out here and hung out. Everybody hung out at Ohio Drake City. It's too bad the bleachers aren't here because the bleachers were 10 foot high and they had weeds that were 12 foot high growing between the bleachers. The bottom was all full of pop and beer cans. Everybody enjoyed Ohio Drag City. So that's going to end our tour and our little walk down memory lane at Ohio Drag City. I'm Tom Martino. Thanks for watching. Any questions, get a hold of me. Pro Stockers, this Friday night, August the 8th at Youngstown, Ohio's Drag City. National champion Grumpy Jenkins with Joe Lapone driver against national champion Ricky Smith from Motorcraft. Chevy versus Ford. Gates open at 5. Two wild runs, 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. at Youngstown, Ohio's Drag City. Take Mahoney Avenue, Route 18 West. Then first left after the end of Reservoir. Call 538-3291.